Um, I'm next. Devin. A um, couple things. Uh, first off, just two anthropology books that I've read. Um, one brought up points. It was a study of Papua Guinea and a very primitive culture there. And <clears throat> brought up the stat that over about 50 to 70 percent, or you have about every adult male has about 50 to 70 percent chance of dying due to warfare. Um, compared to about three to five percent or less mm -hmm. um, among modern societies, as well as <clears throat> a culture that I read <clears throat> about Sub-Saharan Africa, I believe it's in Namibia. Um, most of uh, most adult males, uh, they've reached the age of 30, they've probably killed about five people, if not more. Um, and I think that um, my view is that civilization allows us contact with people um, that are different. Um, that, you know, have we, were we back to a primitive culture, we would view these small differences as a uh, you know, reason to, to defend ourselves and to retreat back into our, our comfort zone and, and attack, whereas when we come, out, come in contact with, with other people, um, this kind of uh, limitation that is allowed by civilization um, allows us to, to view these as, as rather insignificant. Um, think about Philo Farnsworth, who just mentioned the television, saying how you know, his dream of that was to end war, um, because that would uh, drive from the humanity of cultures that are different than ours. Um, and ironically, and this is you know, going on technology, not civilization so much, but ironically, I came across, and I'm very new to anarchism, it's not my most passionate, uh, or my biggest passion, mm -hmm. but I came across Thursday and last night for the first time, thanks to just fiddling around the internet. Um, so it's kind of ironic that yeah. you know, I was exposed to these peaceful, um, more anarch, but probably wouldn't have these tendencies were it not for civilization and its byproduct of technology. So it seems like the more that we're able to integrate that, the more that we can view other people as similar to ourselves rather than resorting to the type of civilization that exists in Papua New Guinea or in um, Namibia. And the stats seem to seem to back that up quite, rather than the, as he pointed out, romanticized view of primitive culture. Um, yeah, uh, okay, like obviously primitive culture, like yeah, I think any of the uh, anarcho-primitivists would actually admit that, yeah, it's not, it, they're not saints. They're not saying that they're saints. They're saying that they have established a, a basically stable matter of organizing society, right, that can exist for, you know, in a, in, in, that in America existed for at least 10,000 years, probably even more, even longer than that, right? That existed pretty stably without destroying their ecological land base, that had basically an egalitarian society. And yeah, there are some, there are some tribes that engaged in more warfare than others. That's unavoidable, okay? But the point is, is that they are stable. Secondly, like the idea that like, okay, because, so we, we, we nitpick these like individual tribes that happen to be a little bit more warlike, which first off, I would like to point out that in this day and age, there are very few, you know, uh, tribal societies that are unaffected by civilization. So I, I would maybe call into question, you know, there are these tribes' relationship to civilization. In addition to that, tribal societies don't have the ability to kill on the scale that industrialized civilization does, right? Like, you know, war, war, would World War would, it, would World War One or Two or Vietnam would have any of those those catastrophes? been possible if our, if, our, if our society was on the scale of a hunter-gatherer society. I, don't think so. I agree with you on that point. The same, while the capacity might not be there to kill as many people, one person might not be able to kill as many people. Mm -hmm. If, as is the case in Midian, and, and granted this wasn't, um, had no political leaning whatsoever, the book that I read, mm -hmm. either of them. Um, but if each and every person is killing five to, five to seven people, um, then that the, the, the mass murder might not be carried out by one person, but rather than you know being concentrated, it would just be distributed distributed among everyone. Still, we're, ta we're talking about a matter of scale, right? And if the scale of these societies is greatly reduced, so is the amount of killing. Do you want to take Dave? I have a question. Yeah, so um, if it's OK with you, I just want to respond kind of both you and your name is Kenny? Right? Yep. OK. Yeah. Um, and I'm not an anarcho primitivist, but if I were to respond to you, I'd say something to the effect of, I don't think that the project of anarcho primitivism is to like have some sort of like global harmony that is just happening good. It's really more about like inter or sorry intra tribal harmony and stability and inter tribal 
um, status quo, even if that status quo is ultimately like ongoing, you know, small scale conflicts. Number one, and number two would be, um, I don't know, and it, correct me if I'm wrong, but that there was ever in the last 10,000 years any kind of pentagemonic empire or large scale civilization in the North American continent, right? Which would seem to speak to the possibility of such a status quo Wait, being again. possible, right? That of any kind of hegemonic empire or civilization. That's why it's kind of to say North American continent, because I, I just don't know about North America. Yeah, then I'm totally limiting it to North America, but it seems like it's possible, right? Like, that that might be some evidence. I don't know. Just throwing that out there. But uh, also, what I would say right back Kenny. to you is basically Kenny. that we have the ability now, and so how do you say no? Kenny. To the exactly. They didn't have the ability, so to say no, you can't have the ability. That's fine. Also, Kenny, I'm proposing a moderation now. If you want to respond, please raise your hand. Um, I guess I, I'm going to draw an analogous situation. Uh, it seems to me what you're advocating for is that all the people who realize the horrors of civilization should go around and spread the message, hey, look, if we don't stop this, it's going to destroy us all. And so what we should do is sort of institute this sort of, uh, I don't know, sort of uh, transition phase through permaculture. And then out of that, eventually, we'll wind down into some sort of withering into uh, uh, anarcho pervis paradise. Uh, does that? Sure, I would also say in addition to that that maybe going on the offensive against civilization to prevent them from... Further. Right, and so, and so insofar as there's going to be another civilization that's going to threaten them, they should take precautions in order to protect themselves. Now, the reason I said it was analogous was to be the following. Uh, I, I, Marxist Leninist, I believe that uh, the enlightened vanguard should go around and, and raise class consciousness beyond trade unionism, uh, take over the state, institute socialism as a transition phase to communism. So, that's my... There you go. You can call it Gregor, we can move on. So. Or, I, I was going to say, I think you've done a wonderful job. I would love to talk to you privately or alone, because I've got a bazillion questions. <laughs> However, I move that you guys go to the next speaker and give this guy a break. It's like a wolf pack, man. <laughs> I agree. I don't know if Greg wants to. You want to it's your choice. Uh, I would actually just highly encourage you, uh, again, I would advocate the state, but I would actually highly encourage you to look at Japan um, under the shogunate, um, because with a strong central state, uh, Japan under the shogunate willfully shows, again, with problems of it being a, a semi-feudal society under the shogunate, but willfully chose not to pursue technology. And in fact, it wasn't until the opening of uh, the country by uh, Commodore Perry. And so, you, I mean, you've been asked several times, well, how do you get anarcho primitivism? Uh, I would just encourage you to look at Japan as a possible model for instituting anarcho-organism. Okay. So uh, let's give Josh a hand.